Okay, today we're looking at book number 56. It's called the book of Hebrews. And this was a letter written by Paul to the Hebrews, to his own people, the Jews. And especially today, we want to look at Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to read through Hebrews chapter 11. So it's going to be a bit different today. We've got some pictures to show you. My kids have already seen a lot of these pictures. But we're going to read through Hebrews 11 because today we're doing an activity on the heroes of the faith. So in the book of Hebrews, there's a lot of information about Jesus, right, and how he compares with the Old Testament and the New Testament, how Jesus compares to all these pictures in the Old Testament and New Testament. To today, we want to look at the heroes of the faith. Ah, so my kids may have already seen these pictures, but somebody has drawn some children's pictures to go along with the Bible verses. So we're going to read through Hebrews 11, and you're going to hear about all the different heroes of the faith. All right, let's start from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what is this, a map? It's a map. And because they haven't seen it yet, faith, they're believing the map, right? So that's why the picture is of a map. For by it the elders obtained a good report. So here's some of the characters that we're going to see in a moment. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. What is that telling us? That God, he spoke the world into existence, isn't he? That's the earth here and the universe. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So we see the earth, we see the sun, we see the stars. But you know what they were made by? The things which do not appear? It's by God's word. God just spoke these things into existence. Now we start to learn about some of the heroes of the faith. You remember? That's what the title is of this, uh, of this chapter. People know this as the heroes of the faith. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. So this is Abel here. He offered an animal, because God likes animal sacrifices. That represents Jesus. And here, he offered the fruit of his work. That represents our own works. This is why Abel was recognized as more righteous, because he had an animal sacrifice. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. So you can see here, this picture represents God as accepting this gift, but oh, the smoke's going into, into Cain's eyes, showing that it wasn't accepted by God, that one. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. So this is something interesting about Enoch. That Enoch was just taken to heaven. Enoch didn't actually die. So he's somebody we learn about in the Old Testament very briefly and a little bit in the New Testament, like in Hebrews. But before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So he lived a life that was pleasing to the Lord. And how did he do that? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you see, we have to have faith to please God. We need to believe God in order to, have, to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we know Enoch was a great man of faith. Maybe you can ask a question afterwards, Simon. We'll read through this one together. All right, Hebrews 11:7. By faith, Noah... Do you guys remember we learned about Noah in Genesis? Noah being warned of God of things not seen. This is a funny picture of Noah, isn't he? Somebody's drawn big. As yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house. What's the ark? The big boat. Do you remember he made a big boat? By the which he condemned the world. So he was making the ark, and then everyone knew that the flood was coming. But they didn't get on, did they? Only eight people got on. And became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So this is his family after they get off the ark. Now we get to Abraham. Remember Father Abraham? By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. So this is Abraham being called of God out of his country. And he's being called of God to go out of the land of the Chaldeans. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. What is this saying? He went out, he got, God called him and he went out and he didn't know where he was going to go. 
God just told him to get out and, and go into the land that he was going to show him. By faith he sojourned. What does this word mean? Sojourned means when you temporarily stay somewhere. So you've ever been on a holiday? And you go, you go on a holiday and you stay somewhere just for a short amount of time? That's what it means to sojourn. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. So he didn't know where he was going to be. Dwelling in tabernacles. What is this? What's a tabernacle? Anyone remember, Simon? That's true. They, went in, they go to play, worship God. The God was worshipped in a tabernacle as well, but the word tabernacle is a tent. You know, like when we go camping, we stay in a tent? Yes. That's what they were like. They stayed in a tabernacle. Tabernacle? God made a special tabernacle to be worshipped in as well. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac, Jacob, there's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So why was he living in a tent? Because one day Abraham was looking for a permanent city, but it's not an earthly city. He's looking for one made by God, a heavenly city. Through faith also Sarah, ah, this is the lady that Sarah is named after, herself received strength to conceive seed. She's pregnant here, isn't she? Look, and he's happy, isn't he? Because he's got a baby. They were trying, they were praying very hard for a baby. God miraculously gave them one and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, of who? Him? And him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the sea shore innumerable. Right, saying from that, so many, he had so many children from there. How many Israelites were there after that? Hebrews eleven thirteen. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What does it mean when you're a stranger and a pilgrim? That means you don't treat this place like your home. You're just passing through temporarily. You know, when you go somewhere to another town, you're a stranger. You're not there forever. Well, that's what we have to think of it when we're here on this earth. We're strangers and pilgrims. But they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Uh, what are they looking for? They're looking for their own city, the real city. But that's going to be in heaven one day, the new heaven and new earth. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. So look at him, he's looking back. He's saying, if you look back at the old country where you came from, Maybe you'll think about going back, but no, we have to keep looking forward. We have to look forward to the heavenly city. But now they desire, look at this, a better country. That is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. You see, there's a city that's prepared by God. Remember this one? Oh, where'd it go? Oh, where'd the picture go? This one. There's a city prepared by God. That's the one we want to look at, look for, not the earthly one. For he hath prepared for them a city. Now we're going to learn a bit more about these heroes of the faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So Abraham offered up his son accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. So why was Abraham willing to sacrifice his son? Because he believed that God, even after he sacrificed him, was going to bring him back to life again. From whence also he received him in a figure. So you remember he miraculously received Isaac, his son. Remember when Sarah conceived seed? So he, was, he knew that God had miraculously given him a son. If he was going to sacrifice his son, God was going to raise him up again. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. So that's how you can bless somebody who had their hand on them, concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. So you remember Joseph was a ruler in Egypt and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, so this is Joseph here, these two children, when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. Did you know Joseph, when he died, he knew that one day the Israelites were going to leave in the Exodus. You remember when Moses parted the Red Sea? 
and gave commandment concerning his bones. So his bones were kept here. And he said, hey, when you leave, I want you to take my bones with you before he even died. Now we go on to Moses by faith. Moses is when he was a baby. When he was born, was hid three months of his parents. Why? Because they were trying to kill all the children in Egypt that day. Because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. See, so they weren't scared of the king, but they're hiding because they don't want them to find baby Moses. By faith, Moses, when he was calm to years, this is when he was an adult now, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So he, even though he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, when he came to years, when he was older, he said, you know what? I don't want to be called an Egyptian. I'm not an Egyptian. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. See, so sometimes when you take the easy route, it's not always the right route. Sometimes the hard route is the route we should take. There's Moses looking at the cross, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. And here's Pharaoh. This is when Pharaoh and Moses face off. You remember when God sent Moses to Pharaoh and said, let my people go? By faith he forsook Egypt. That's Moses. Not fearing the wrath of the king. Does he look happy? No, he's angry, right? Because now Moses is going against him. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Who is him who is invisible? That's God. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. You remember they killed the Passover lamb, they put the blood on the doorposts. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Right, so this is when the angel of death came through. But if they saw the blood, you see the blood on the doorpost there? And he passed over. That's why it's called the Passover lamb. Because if you put the Passover lamb's blood on your door, then the angel of death came and passed over your house and you'd be spared from God's judgment. By faith they passed through the Red Sea. So this is what Joseph knew about. Moses, he's parting the Red Sea using the power of God. And all the Israelites walked through on dry land. As by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do a drown. So the Egyptians tried to follow them. And what happened? Whoosh, the water came in and drowned them. They couldn't chase them because God was on their side. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Do you remember we learned about in Joshua the walls of Jericho? We marched around, blew the ram's horn. See all these stories they're alluding to, the ones that we've learnt over in this year. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed. So Rahab was the one that put the scarlet thread out the window. So when they came into the walls of Jericho, fell down, but Rahab was saved. Rahab didn't die. Why? When she had received the spies with peace, because when the Israelite spies came in, she protected them. She didn't get them in trouble. What other ones are there? And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. This is Gideon. And of Barak. I don't know which one's Barak. Maybe this one's Barak. Samson is the one with the long hair, this one. And of Jephthah. So this is probably Barak. Samson. Jephthah. Of David also. Which one's David? I'm not too sure. I think maybe it's this one. <laughs> or this one. David also, Samuel, and of the prophets. So you got Elijah, Elisha here. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. So because of their faith, because of their faith in God, they were able to do great works, weren't they? They would go to battle. Yesterday we went and bought some props, didn't we? We got some new swords and shields and battles. Ah, you know, through faith, look at this. They went to battle. We got the helmet, shield, the sword. Obtain promises. Stop the mouths of lions. Who's this? Do you remember who stopped the mouths of lions? Who was it? The angel did, but who was in there with the lions? You remember, Mateo. Daniel. This is Daniel here in the lion's den. That's it. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Who's this? This is King Saul. And who's that? David. David, that's right. You know, when King Saul threw the spear at David. He had to dodge it. Through faith, he escaped. Out of weakness were made strong. This is Gideon. He's threshing and he's hiding from the Midianites. Waxed valiant in fight. So remember, through faith, he was used of God and he led 300 into battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Who's this Elisha? Elisha raised the widow's son back to life. 
and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. You can see he's bound there in the chains in jail that they might obtain a better resurrection. Why were they able to do it? Because they would get rewarded later on in heaven. Others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins, look at his clothing, goatskins, and being destitute, afflicted, tormented, destitute when you have nothing. Look, he's got nothing in his pockets. No food, no money. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts. You see here in the desert, the trees are dead. And in the mountains, in the dens and in the caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us. You see, they didn't get to see the Lord Jesus Christ die. We didn't either, but we can see from the past. We know that he has died on the cross. That's the better promise. That they without us should not be made perfect. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So this is you guys now. You guys have all these stories, all these witnesses, all these people that you've seen have great faith. What is it saying here? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which just so easily beset us. So you see how they're trying to get rid of the sin from their life? The sin is the bad things. We're trying to get rid of that. Why? So you can have faith and you can run the race. Let us run the race with patience that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. You know, Jesus here with his cross. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. But, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For well, consider him. What does that mean? Think about what Jesus went through when we go through the hard times that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. So sometimes you feel like quitting, don't you? But if you think about how hard Jesus had it, then that'll help you have the strength to keep going. All right, I hope you enjoyed that Bible passage with the pictures. Let me show you what we're making today. Yeah, and you don't get up yet. Sit down. This is what we're making today. We're making a little book that goes through the different heroes of the faith. So look at who's, remember the different heroes of the faith? We've got Abel, he was 11-4. Elizabeth's only colored the first one in. So you guys can color them all in. We have Enoch, Noah. Remember when we went through the, the heroes of the faith, we saw all these different characters. And you guys can color them in. This is Abraham, so he's the older, Father Abraham. This is Sarah. Baby Isaac, you got here. And Isaac when he's older. Jacob. Joseph. And it goes through all the different Hebrew passages. Moses. You see there? Who's next? Rahab. Remember the harlot? She was the one that protected the spies. So even though she didn't live a very good life, a very clean life, she did help. She still believed God. And then Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Okay, so we'll have, make a little book, Heroes of the Faith. All right, let's go to the back and we'll make this one together.